Hi, Shelly. Hi, Frazier. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me. Especially <laughs> after the suggestion of toppies and floppies. <laughs> I'm not sure if you'd <laughs> you come back. <laughs> well, you know that everybody liked your suggestion, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I have good ideas. <laughs> well, I was definitely like nobody was on my side. Everybody <laughs> wanted to call it toppies and floppies. Well, okay. now now that everybody likes it, I have to be a contrarian. <laughs> I've Look, set, you got everyone I, on your side. I'm, I'm a trendsetter that I shirk it, you know, <laughs> mainstream to counterculture. <laughs> I see how it is. A yes. true millennial. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <Yeah>. Anyway, <laughs> today we're going to do a review, a double review, if you will, of After Sappho by Selby Wynn Schwartz here we go which yes. is a booker long-listed title which is a novel <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that yes. and so what do we think how would we describe this book to people how would you do it <laughs> for me i would probably say whew, it's like an interlocked grouping of vignettes with multiple character perspective, which is far more concerned with a macro storyline it's trying to weave than those particular vignettes. And that could or could not be considered a novel. Because even at the end, the author is like, this is, I don't even know how to classify it myself. So I think it's fair to be like, what, what is? <laughs> so, okay, so after... Sappho. After Sappho is written in, like, like you said, it's written in small vignettes. So you get a character name and a date, and then a couple of paragraphs, and then another character name and date and a couple of paragraphs. And it feels a bit meditative, it feels um, thoughtful, and that in that it's talking about really one idea. Um, but it continues to circle, change characters every couple of paragraphs throughout until the very end. And she, the, um, the style is incredibly consistent. So <laughs> that's, I mean, I don't know. It's some yeah. people are having a hard time saying that it is fiction because there are parts that are fictionalized, but some people are saying that it's a blend of fiction and nonfiction because some of the parts feel not fictionalized and are not fictionalized. So it's a, it's definitely a hard book to classify. <laughs> yeah. And it takes and it's place... hard to say it's even a novel just to say, yeah. because it, the storyline is not really existent. Yeah. And it here. takes place over 150 years is roughish, roughly roughish. -ish. Yeah. <laughs> and I would <laughs> like say all. the heart of the novel is basically the novel is figuring out what it's doing, basically. Would you agree with yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. I would say like most of the novel, you're spending the time, at least what's keeping you going is that you want to know what's going on and why it's being written in this way. There are, the reason why it says it's after Sappho is that there are a lot of uh, Sappho fragments included I think you can probably talk better about the Sappho bits well the yeah it's form meets function is that it's inspired by the sapphic or Sappho fragments that have been found and then it sort of thematically links those to what is happening around that but it's mostly I would I would say it's highly extrapolative <laughs> of those things rather than like a pinpoint the and plus since it's a fragment it's being interpreted anyway so it's it's sort of like a highly subjective thing which is somewhat the point of the book as well like it's so subjective that I think until you get until the end where it's fairly heavy-handed explaining what it is you're gonna everybody's gonna be wondering and projecting onto the book what they think is going on what is happening and what it's trying to convey with its style yeah yeah I think that at least early on so I don't feel like this is a spoiler but I felt like 
Sappho was an idea of love that was trying to be expressed and set free. That was ultimately like what I kind of thought was happening throughout because the women that they're talking about are all artists and um, have um, been in love with other women. And yeah, I don't know, but the whole, anyways, I don't know. So what, what so a spoiler free discussion, what did you, what did you think about this? Uh, <laughs> I ended up navig it was kind of like a roller coaster where I was like woohoo this is pretty good and then I was like oh I don't think I like this anymore and then it kind of when it I don't know when the turn <laughs> occurs that I was kind of like back up and I was like oh, okay this is this is more interesting than I expected and I liked it also I tend to gravitate towards things that are being unconventional and more interesting and award them points for that even if they fail which I think this does at some points you know like it's definitely not fully working for me I think even if it is compelling throughout ish the resituations of the paragraphs was just like really difficult for my brain yeah so I think it was like a it's a high cognitive load experience where I had to take a lot of breaks read it very slowly um and also my brain just seems to slide over headers very easily you know like I don't for some reason want to actually read those and they're important because they situate <laughs> you in, in the person and the time and, and I, it happens for some so reason often. just glide yeah it happens all the time so I tend to glide so it yeah it was interesting because it was such a different experience and I had to really change my reading to get something out of it hmm. um, and for such a short book that reads very quickly 280 pages that probably could have been done in like a day if you just took a whole day to read it mm -hmm. uh, yeah I needed a lot of breaks to sort of process it interesting okay well I mean <laughs> I, I had some of the same, I had some of the same experiences as you, though, I think, okay, so the book is written in a way that she uses the, a language where I think that you have to kind of get in a rhythm with, um, and it's something that, like, once you're sort of in, at least once my, I was in a rhythm, I was, like, pretty okay, um, but, like, <laughs> with yeah the every time they were switching characters it was really hard to grab onto one character and to like understand her story um but maybe in the spoiler section i can talk about maybe why i think that the author went that way but um yeah there was just i don't know um so i but the header thing i had to tell myself to stop reading them because it was slowing me down because i was i would stop that like every two paragraphs i would stop and read this header and like situate myself and then start again. And I'm like, I think if I'm at the two thirds mark, I know the characters well enough that I can just continue um, and mm -hmm. not really pay attention because she, you know, it would be like uh, so-and-so at this time period, but then you get in the paragraph and you would know that that's where they were at anyways. And so I sort of had to like be like, stop stopping every two seconds <laughs> to read the headers and just keep going um, so that I could get in, like a, into a a better rhythm with the book otherwise I was sort of having a similar experience and I felt like we were starting and stopping constantly even when I personally wasn't starting and stopping yeah I like was nothing was interrupting my reading I was definitely starting and stopping the entire way through <laughs> yeah oh really yeah oh well you know that like on the second to last day I was just like I think I'm gonna finish this <laughs> like and I just started yeah. I was just like I'm going I'm <laughs> off so, but at that point we were in a time period that I was familiar with and the characters I, were, I was familiar with that I felt like I could read it a little bit more quickly without having missed anything. Yeah, I really liked so. that it centered um, only queer people too as well. Mm -hmm. And it did a Definitely. good job of honing in on the, the queer experience of those queer people. Mm -hmm. um, and overall uh if we're gonna uh, do a non-spoiler uh or river proper review or whatever i guess my star rating your star is uh four stars it's a 3.5 rated up 
uh, to four okay. because I was overall positive on it. Um, and yeah, so I, I guess the uh, the reveal, I guess, worked for me, and it came together enough that I was like, oh, okay, this is this is really interesting in some ways. I don't think it's completely successful, but it's new enough, it's novel enough within the novel that I mm -hmm. am positive about it. How about you? <laughs> I like, I really disliked it. <laughs> I really, really, really disliked it because by the time I figured out what was happening, I felt like there was, the author could have taken a different route and it would have been so much more successful. And, um, and on top of that, I felt like I really did invest quite a bit of being open and trying to invest in the book. And so at some point it's like, um, I think, uh, that tag a while back, the philosophy of reading tag, like what's most important, a character, you know, the character a message or the plot. And for me, it's just like, I have to be invested in the character's struggle in some way in order for me to enjoy it. And I felt like I was constantly trying to get invested in the character's struggle. Like I wasn't putting up a wall and yet I felt, I felt like Selby Wynn Schwartz was not giving me anything to grab onto or to care about, which is really disappointing to me. And so it was like a really not successful read at all. Yeah, the there's definitely very little concern for the micro plot beats of each character, even though some of them are very huge things that occur in their lives Absolutely. and could be very dramatic and mm -hmm. impactful if they weren't like, here's one sentence <laughs> that this okay. happened. Yeah. And then it's yeah. two years later and, and this is happening. And then it's three years before and this is happening. And you're like, oh, okay. So what actually matters here basically and you're trying to figure right. out that the entire way through basically right yeah definitely um so yeah so I don't this wasn't successful at all for me like this is not <laughs> so it's zero I stars like, I'm gonna <laughs> 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 I mean on a sentence level on a sentence level and on a concept level I thought it was fine I, I actually enjoyed the idea of exploring uh sapphic history lesbian history um I, I i love that idea and i would have loved to like have gotten more out of it but i just didn't um, and it's not that i didn't try either i think that's why i'm sort of like irritated at it so yeah well yeah. i think it's a problem too when you um when it engages with you like that and you come up with theories that you're invested in as to where it's going and those end up being more interesting to you than what the point of the book actually is, right? Right, right. And then there is like kind of a pivotal moment, I think near the end. And I was like that, and I, we'll talk about it in the spoiler section, but I was like, that's what you were trying to do the whole time. And I don't think that you were very successful. So ultimately I think that this, for me as a reader, where I'm at in my life and what I know about like sapphic history it didn't work for me but maybe perhaps somebody who knows more about this type of history the documents that Schwartz is following the people that um, they're following it might be a lot more successful than it was for me so fair enough yeah <laughs> okay so let's go let's transition into the spoilers section Spoiler. <laughs> yeah okay I want to hear from you so what did you think about the end uh I liked the reveal that things things came together in a different way than what I was expecting. And that surprise su kind of bolstered it. Like anytime an author can surprise me with something, it's generally something that I'll respond pleasantly to. Right. So how um, were you surprised in this novel? Um, well, I just, I didn't realize that it was going to be a, f a fictional biography and I really liked that it is ostensibly I don't know if this is true or not because the full disclosure there's like 30 pages after or something where she sort of checks herself and says this is real and this is not real kind of stuff right mm -hmm. and there's cite it's citations not and stuff 15 pages mm 
Oh, okay. So not that much, but I wasn't interested in reading those. <laughs> um, oh, I did. I did that all. Yeah. I was just like, oh, this is very like, <laughs> like looking at a Shelley's. library or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, which is like, when this is me. Yeah. you should have presented this information more interestingly, basically, because <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, if it, if it is true or not, it doesn't matter to me, but Virginia Woolf's idea for this concept, this malleable living biography, underground, um, with the roots, all of these different characters, and the through line being sapphic and lesbian characters throughout history, what's happened to them, and therefore happened to all of women who are like this, mm -hmm. when all women, for to some degree, all of these things happen to all women, but there's more oppression uh, if you're queer, of course, but the mm -hmm. idea was interesting enough and rooted in Virginia Woolf, uh, who I really enjoy reading and think highly mm -hmm. of anyway, that I was like, ooh, it's a confluence of interesting for Fraser. <laughs> I was like, yeah. this, this is not something I would have seen coming, you know? Uh, we each had our mm. own theories about what was going on, and I, I think we were mm -hmm. both wrong, right? You didn't see it coming either? No, I didn't. Um, but I think there was there was a moment that it was like Virginia Woolf has felt like there's a sentence in which there it was like Virginia Woolf has felt all of the lives that we have lived in like the sapphic voice. Um, so it, uh, previously, so it's like you have all of these different very pivotal queer women that have tried to bring queerness to the public consciousness and this struggle and then like ultimately you, you get to Virginia Woolf and then Virginia Woolf has her own storyline but I think when finally when it got there I was like I really just wish you would have done the seven lives of Virginia Woolf because I think it would have been just a better book. <laughs> like, and I don't mean because it's like Oscar Wilde is a character at one point, but he's not because she, no one's really a character because everyone is being talked about rather than being introduced and where you're getting to know their personality. It was just more like, here's Oscar Wilde. Here's why I don't like him. Here's what he did wrong. Here's all the women he wronged. And like, it was just like all of this stuff. And I'm just like, but I don't really get a sense of like Oscar Wilde's personality or even like Sarah Bernhardt's personality or I mean, you don't really get that. You, I know how she dressed. I know who she was in love with and all that. But ultimately, it was really difficult to differentiate different characters. But then it, sometimes it's like, I feel like that was a point because it was exploring like this sort of universal sapphic voice. But I just yeah. wish it was like the seven lives of like Virginia Woolf or so someone else and that we just went through the story in that way. Yeah. Um, it's kind whereas of like it's kind of ironic because it takes away the voices of the people it's trying to give voice to in its like expression of it yeah right and then by the time we got to Virginia Woolf and um Vita Sackville West I was like there is a book that had their love letters to each other and I would have just rather read that <laughs> so <laughs> yeah yeah because I heard they're like really gorgeously written and like super spicy <laughs> like um very like just beautiful and like very intimate and I was like I just didn't get like anything intimate or anything to grab onto I couldn't even say that I liked a character because there's not really a personality to the character except for someone's angry yeah rightfully so but like you it uh, uh, it just felt it was too fragmented for me <laughs> yeah uh, yeah. There was enough interesting bits throughout that I was like, oh, this is cool. I didn't know about this. Like uh, Ovid or Ovid. Oh, uh, yes. Ovid. Um, recontextualizing Sappho so that she's ostensibly in love with some dude and throws herself off a cliff or something like that. Which right. Is... So then, but see, the thing is, is that that, may, that inspired me to grab Meta Metamorphosis by Ovid off of my shelves. And I read a few pages of that. Because I don't, I haven't read that. So I don't know if her critique of Ovid is actually the critique that I would also give. Right. So on, so, yeah. So again, I was like, that's where, when we were doing our spoiler free version, I was like, maybe it's for somebody who is more familiar with these texts. 
Um, they also talked about Ibsen's in the Dollhouse. They talked about Oscar Wilde. So if you are fans of these writers, I think that you maybe will get more from that. But I'm a fan of Virginia Woolf and those sections weren't more illuminating. Um, they were just like, oh yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree with what you're saying based on what I know about Virginia Woolf. I don't know. So it was very interesting. And I didn't yeah. learn as much as I wanted to. So everything was just like, ah, oh, deflated balloon. <laughs> yeah, for me, it raised enough interesting ideas. And I tend to latch on more to macro things generally that I think that's why it just sort of worked for me. And just, yeah, being able to surprise me is, is good. When, when I read like 400 books a year, if you're able to surprise me, I'm kind of like, nice one. <laughs> you get some points for that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it. yeah, I, I would wager, especially for a literary prize novel contender, most people will not like this book, probably, or it'll be very polarizing, because I think a lot of people stack these books up against each other with very literary in mind and very novel in the actual form of the novel in mind. Um, and I know in the past people have gotten pissed about their classifications of novels before as well. Oh, I for see. Some stuff. I see. So, yeah. I mean, if it wasn't, if it was something, if <laughs> part of it is like, it didn't even have a traditional plot line yeah. either. And so even as I'm sort of approaching the two thirds line, the three fourths line, when there is supposed to be a turn in traditional, like, you know, expository, you know, you know, the whole thing with the climax and then falling action and re resolution, you should, you should be able to feel that in a novel and like, it didn't even do that. And so I was, there was a lot of, I took issue with that too. <laughs> so yeah. 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 And I don't know. It does semi undermine the goal of what it's trying to do if it is trying to educate the reader on these things because you don't know what is real and what isn't real. So, yeah, I don't know. That's why I was saying it's like mostly unsuccessful, even though I appreciate it and give it points for what it is doing. It's still a text that heavily requires other people to do more work after they pick it up um, right and you can't get around that <laughs> basically no yeah, like it might no. prompt your interest in these things um, there's definitely some interesting things that occur and some ideas uh about like critiquing Ovid for instance but you don't actually know I mean you can read her notes at the end with all the references and the citations and stuff but in the end if you actually want to dig into it you got to pick those things up. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, so, uh, you know, I could be in sort of two minds about it and be like, this book wasn't for me. But then I'm also like, there wasn't a great, like even Virginia Woolf, I didn't get a sense of her personality. Like she has, she's talked about, she's talked to, she's talked about her accomplishments and about her relationship, but like any like internal life, you're not really getting and so, yeah, it's hard for me to even be like, is this a novel? I mean, it's, it's fiction, <laughs> some, <laughs> I don't know. And so, yeah, I don't know. It's just like hard for me to even recommend because it's so untraditional, I guess. I would say for fans of Ghosts in the Throat, I think that they would also, those people would really <laughs> might enjoy after Sappho. <laughs> because it, it's similar in that it's a bit meditative, it's a lot of thinking, it's digging into one concept, digging into a similar concept. There's not a traditional plot line. There's no um, you know, climax with a falling action and resolu resolution. There's none of that. And, and it has beautiful language. So if you like Ghosts in the Throat, you might really like After Sappho, but otherwise I had a really difficult time even like grasping out a comparison. And I liked, I liked Ghosts in the Throat, even though I didn't love it. And, even then, this was just like not great. So, mm -hmm. well, fair know. enough. Wait, wait. I do have one question though. Mm -hmm. Of your of your book or reading, where is this landing? For well, me, it's at the bottom. I haven't really thought about the list. Well, it won't be the very bottom because I couldn't even make it through. 
a novel <laughs> I haven't reviewed yet, Glory. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be at least one above that. Um, and then if I pick up something, I don't think. But it's near the bottom? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, but I, it's a, it's hard because this year I have some favorites already on the list. So like the trees. That's not the list problem though. <laughs> no, but, but for my yeah. personal ranking, it, it, yeah, it's a problem yeah. for this book. <laughs> so this, had, this book had t- stiff competition from, from your list, from the yes. list that, yeah. Okay. And it didn't, it didn't hold up. No not comparatively (laughs) not comparative well and we are comparing them because they're on the same long list so yeah this is i have read i've read three you know three little booker books this is on the bottom so yeah yeah all right well thanks for having me thanks for coming on and i will see you next time bye bye